The crew aboard the research vessel Beister spent a week dragging sensitive machinery through the water around a submerged La Jolla Canyon. They're hoping to understand the complex processes that feed the rich ecosystem under the surface. Engineer Sarah Goheen says the team uses a winch system to raise and lower a CTD device, which measures conductivity, temperature, and depth. The team is tracking dye released near the canyon several days before. So we're just yo-yoing non-stop with that, driving transects of the canyon back and forth to see if we can see the dye that we released on Tuesday, um, which is letting us measure basically how the seafloor here is shaping what the water does when it's hitting there and how energy is dissipating or how energy is building up more and basically just what the canyon does to the area. The four foot long tube resembles a model rocket. It can be raised and lowered quickly through the different ocean layers, giving researchers a snapshot of the water column from the surface to the ocean floor. Uh, this is the, the crash guard, and so this is actually going to be removed when we are deploying it. So this is just, just for, for on deck because they are crazy delicate and you can break them by looking at them. There's another tool that does roughly the same thing, but much slower. Instead of pulling and dropping the device as quickly as possible, it is designed to take its time. Falls at half a meter a second. It's got these umbrella wings that actually open up in the water column so that it has a nice steady descent rate and it free falls. And we need it to free fall nice and slow so that the um, sensors on the tip of it, which we have two different ones, one for shear and one for micro temperature, so that those can go down through the water column almost like a phonograph needle. And the information it gathers helps researchers understand the different layers of the ocean and how turbulence affects them. The warmer water near the surface is separated from deeper, colder water by the thermocline. That's an active barrier between warm and cold, and it's also where the dye has persisted for nearly a week. Researchers added audio snapshots of the water column thanks to an acoustic device strapped to the side of the ship. We can't use lasers, things that use um, light in water, because uh, as you know, probably by looking into the ocean, can't see very, very far down. So light attenuates very, very quickly in water, but sound can propagate a lot further. Postdoctoral researcher Liz Widener says the acoustic signals are sent to the bottom of the ocean every few minutes. The return echo helps fill in the gaps that the larger instruments miss. We can also track the position of the thermocline, so we can track it with very high resolution. We're probably having, you know, one acoustic profile every maybe one to five meters, which is much higher resolution than where, you know, the CTD that we're dropping and bringing back up, you know, that's maybe every hundred meters. And for a solid week, the vessel spent every day with instruments in the water tracking the dye in the constantly moving ocean. Researcher Matthew Alford hopes that data will help explain the underwater turbulence. This information is providing us with fundamental fluid mechanics about how the ocean works that is super climate relevant. Oceanographers think the underwater turbulence brings nutrients from the deeper waters to the warmer surface layer of the ocean. That feeds all manner of plant and animal life, contributing to the vibrant undersea environment. Simulations like this have been done for years but for this one, I really, uh, I really like to see the structures in the dye, and you can just see how, how incredibly complicated the turbulent structures are. Alford compares the underwater waves to the ones surfers might see on the surface. The tidal and wind-driven ocean forces hitting the slope of the canyon fuel the water's movement. The resulting patterns are complex but predictable. This dye begins at the boundary but very quickly, due to convergences in this process, gets shot out into the interior here. And this three-dimensional aspect of the turbulence is not captured in the models that we have right now. In the week-long experiment, the dye released in the ocean teaches researchers about the underwater waves. And understanding the vigorous and complex turbulence that feeds life near the canyon is a small step toward understanding larger ocean processes that can affect things like climate. Climate models have grid cells. You know, they divide the whole ocean into small into grid cells, and the, the smallest grid cell of a, you know, state-of-the-art climate model is San Diego County-sized. And so everything that happens in La Jolla Canyon is not represented properly in climate models, and we have to teach them how to represent that in what's called parameterizations. 
better climate models will lead to better understanding of the changes that are coming as the oceans warm with the rest of the planet. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.